All right, all right, all right. What the hell is going on, everybody? And welcome back. We got ourselves a big semi-finals match. We've got Dark in the top left side. He's been learning that 15-15 and using this a lot in ZVP. He's playing against Max Pax. In the bottom right, who's no doubt annoyed because he loves blocking his opponent's expansion, sends the worker over at the standard timing to block a 16 hatchery and does not find anything. So he's just going to have to use the probe to try and distract the mining in the main base. And I love that Dark's learnt this opening. I mean, honestly, we've seen him use it a few times and when he doesn't get supply blocked, he looks unstoppable because his opening has been so much better off of this. Problem, two out of maybe four but basically like one in two games every second game sometimes two out of three dark gets massively supply blocked between 50 and 60 supply like i'm talking has to build five to seven overlords and it is ruining his follow-up so <laughs> i'm hoping today he's you know he's developed since those last games i cast he's fixed those errors and he's uh cleaned up his opening a little bit i just i just it's a best of three if we get three games i can almost guarantee you one game he will get supply blocked. but we'll see how it goes anyway uh, Dark has made amazing comebacks against Max Pax in the past. There are some series where Max Pax just stalwart, solid defense. Looks like it can't be broken or touched. But that is, I think, in the minority of the times. Anyway, pro bouncing around between the bases. We've got the drones here. Three workers go on gas. 13 on minerals. Got the three workers there mining as well. So he immediately puts three on gas, which is a ton of gas mining. And that means Max Pax will probably anticipate link speed finishing around 345. We'll see if he wants to chrono adepts off across against that. No, full economy. Full economy focus, which means he's doing a ton of chronoing his probes, building that income, his probes coming home. And after the probe left, actually Dark pulled off gas. So he's gone back to a mineral focus. So Dark is playing this more like a gasless opening, but... Max Pax doesn't know that. Whereas if you know your opponent's gasless, you're almost always chronoing adepts across, getting them over there, forcing a lot of slow zerglings and queens out and trying to get damage. Dark instead is saying, as long as I have a ton of minerals, I'm going to have lots of queens. I wouldn't be surprised to see him build a third and fourth queen in the near future. Get a few extra slow zerglings to deal with the adept. And it's actually stalker next for Max Pax. Chronos non-stop on these nexus. My gosh. He doesn't need to do damage. He's, he's so efficient on this opening. It's a good thing that Dark's fixed his opening because his old openings would put him so far behind against this sort of Protoss build. Look at this, three minutes and five seconds, 31 probes. Like with this, this amount of chrono, you can saturate your natural at about 340. It's so early. Normally the benchmark is four minutes. With a one gate expand, you should have your natural finished. In this case, he's gonna have this well before then. He's already moving out to take a third. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the greed, dude, I love it. And I mean, Dark's being greedy as well. He's skipped link speed. He's only got one worker on gas. He's starting link speed at 3.30, which means it won't finish until 4 minutes 50, almost 5 minutes into the game. So it's a, it's an economic arms race. Now, Dark... Oh, he's hitting the 52 supply block is Dark. He hasn't started an Overlord. He's on 52. He has no idle lava right now. You'd think losing an Overlord right now would, would remind you to build Overlords. But Dark just waits for his hatchery to finish, builds another queen, builds a few drones. He still doesn't start Overlords. You're kidding me. You've already been supply blocked for the last 20 seconds, mate. You just lost an overlord. He's going to build one. Mate. I mean, he doesn't have the minerals. There we go. Okay, he's, he's tapping it. As he gets the minerals, he's building the overlords. He builds a second one, a third one. As he gets the 100 minerals for each one, another overlord. Okay, good to see Dark realizes the spot he's in. And you know what? I think he had a good enough start. This doesn't put him too far behind. It's, it's still annoying. It's not optimal. But what's it really slowing down right now? These four drones. And yeah, he's probably building a few more overlords than he needs right now. Up to four gas behind this is Max Max Oracles. Hold on, Oracles. There is a queen and a spore. Should be well defended against this. Eh, if Dark pulled his workers back, they wouldn't have got a single kill, but one kill, nothing too scary. Twilight and Forge in the main base. Third base getting probes chronoed on it. Nine more, 10 more drones building. Okay, cool. So Dark's going up to about 60 or so workers. Max Pax, I mean, they're keeping pace with each other. It's not like Dark is actually outstripping him or anything like that. Dark does need a fast fourth base, though. Actually, I don't see an Evo chamber. What is this style? He might be going fast Mutalisk. Lair is coming up pretty early. No Roach Warren. No Evo chamber. Evo chamber does go down now, but it's a late one. That's not, a, that's not usually the timing for plus one melee. 
Might just be going Roach Hydra Lurker. Just fast hive. Ling's going to go for a bit of a surround here as well. And those Oracles. Not going to find a crazy amount of damage. The Ling's getting a nice little surround there. Uh, yeah, not bad. Cleaning up those Adepts could be good, but... Oh, this gap is so annoying. He's only got a few Lings on top of it. Two drones going down. Make it three. Oh, four drones going down. Oh my gosh. Okay, so four drones go down. Luckily, the fifth one doesn't. I think one of the drones may be hidden in the extractor. And at the end of that, it's 66 workers against 65. It's dead even. There's no fourth base. And a Hydroden goes down? No. Dark. What is this, mate? Okay, he's going to take a fourth. I mean, he might still drop an infestation pit soon, but normally if they're playing Lurkers, they go infestation pit, then Hydroden. The fact that he's playing Hydroden makes me think he might be doing the Roach Hydra Gamble, the old rogue attack. He beat Showtime with this same position, same map spawn, same uh, same spawn location, same map uh, at Katowice. And the problem Showtime had is he put too much cannon battery on his fourth base and his third, and then he just attacked here. And basically there wasn't enough defense. There is Storm on the way. Storm's great versus the Hydras. It's helpful versus the Roaches, but it's nowhere near as useful as like Disruptors. Much better, right? Against this sort of attack. But Disruptors are pretty rare these days. Stalker Storm definitely can hold on. What's the setup? Six gateways. He's got a lot of Stalkers to start. And I guess behind this 14 Stalker, three Oracle defense, he'll start whopping in High Templar, which he needs to do soon, or they're not going to have any Storms ready. Of course, Max Bax has no idea what's going on. Let's watch this from his point of view. He did see a kind of late fourth base. So moving forward on the map, you can see he's a little careful. I think that's just because Dark is also a very dangerous player. It's very hard to predict what Dark's going to do in any given situation. More High Templar warping at home. Clears some creep. I like how he's layering these stasis traps behind his army. Be cool to see Dark split some lings around the left to set those off. Just one ling on each one. Massive worker advantage. 77 probes. He's already going to 8 gateways. He's trying to go 10 gate. Oh man, I think Max Bex might be being a little bit too greedy. He's taking 8 gases and still probing. He just has no idea. Max Bex just has no idea in this game that Dark is going for a giant roach hydral. And, and you know what? He's hiding the roaches. He hasn't built them until now. Do you know why? Because if Max Max sees the roaches, he knows it's Roach Hydra. Whereas if you see a Hydra Ling, Dark does this into Lurkers all the time. Seeing no gas on that fourth base is a bit of a tell. And so few drones as well. I mean, he might realize he's building a second Robo. More cannon battery. More cannon battery. He knows, he knows. He sees it because the revelation's still on the army as he moves out. Max Max is going to have to try and hold. And once again, Dark is pushing to that right side. I told you guys about this one cannon in the natural. Immortals are building. Oh, good good stasis trap there. Does trap a few of the Zerglings. And that's going to make it a bit harder to advance here. Yeah, the Stalkers do quickly pull back. Oracles with extra stasis traps. One Hydra tanks it on the left. Storm's being very patient for Max Bex. One of his Oracles, I think, just went down. Stalkers are there. He blinks to the right to block. Nice Storm. Those Hydras get deflected. But that's okay. Dark's going to shove to the left. There is a big, deep defense of Cannon Battery here. Zealot warp in. Holding the line for a few seconds longer. At the same time on the right, the Stalker's trying to get back there. But that lures Max Pax out into this protrusion. This area where the rally can kind of flank around and get a bit of an angle. The Oracle's trying to fight, but the Hydra's overwhelmed. One Oracle goes down. The other two are out of juice right now. There's a few Zealots in the back of the third, but those aren't doing too well. The Stalker count's getting whittled down. Max Pax has got to be careful. He's getting lured into awkward fights. If he loses too many Stalkers, this could be lights out for Max Pax. Obviously, it's only game one. Lights out in this game, I should say. Not for the series. Those Hydras take going down in, in the base down there to the bottom left. All the Hydras in the fourth have gone down. Max Pax has held on. Dark needs to break him. If Dark doesn't break him in the next minute, he's dead. His army does not scale. Max Pax does. Max Pax's army is way better in the long term, but Max Pax with an awkward misclick. Dark with some nice spreads, but he doesn't seem to have the numbers. His Roach Hydra count just isn't that high. He's going to jump on those High Templars. Storms looking pretty good for zoning them out. Nice storms across the line. And Archon Morph. Dark, Dark's done. He knows he can't break through. He's down 13 workers. And he has no Hive Tech. No, uh, nothing really. I mean, he's just way behind. Immortal Storm. Plus three attack and Blink Stalkers on the way. Max Pax holds in game one. All right, guys. Game one was a little bit rough. Going into game two. Dark has gotten away with the 15-15 again. Max Pax has once again gone for his standard pro block timing. And it has not worked because of that. So I really like this opening for Dark. I think it's great. I think the Roach Hydra timing is one of the worst attacks in the entire repertoire. 
of Zerg play. I think, I, and I think it always has been, but Dark managed to pull it off in that match against Showtime, where Showtime just panicked and burnt his storms a bit too early. And um, I, obviously, Rogue used to have this magic way of figuring out when the Protoss player just wouldn't be prepared for it. To be fair, about half the time Rogue did that, Roach Hydra timing against Protoss, was the half the time when he lost the first round of GSL or, or, or whatever tournament. You know, he'd win a world championship and he'd lose in the first round of the very next event. A lot of those were random, I'm going to max out on Roach Hydra and attack you. It's, it's just not the most elegant timing. There's such a big delay on it hitting, and I just feel like Dark didn't have enough disruption or distraction going on to pull that off. Thank you, Wigan and Taco Knight, for the subs there. Really appreciate the love, gang. Massive support. Third and fourth queen on the way. Now, notice, guys, I always say, as long as you build up to four queens, or you start building your third and fourth by 3.30, you're usually going to have that, that two queens in each base ready for the Oracle. Now, I have actually been arguing recently that Dark, as well as a few of the other players, have been kind of over-defending against Oracles. I get when you play against Hero and Max Packs all day, you kind of, you kind of want to. But uh, building two spores and six queens this early is overly safe. It's actually, it's kind of unnecessary to be quite so quick. Oh, on all of that. You can delay it a little bit longer. But that being said, better safe than sorry. I would always rather someone over defend than under defend. So keep in mind, this is like a very minor criticism. This is a, uh, he spends slightly more money or, or he, send, he spends the money earlier than I would like him to. I think he could defend without spending quite so much money quite so early. Uh, nice catch with that Oracle comes in. Does find a hole in the vision. Gets three drones. Very good run by for Max Packs. It's going to come in on the south side of this base. That one won't find anything. Uh, taking a few hits there, though. Got to be careful, mate. Have to regen those shields from scratch. Four more gateways hit. Guys, he just surrounded his gas probe. <laughs> he pulls it out, cancels the gate, remakes it. And he is, of course, rallying out to that third now. 48 probes against 49. Thank you so much, Dark Dice Demon. What's up, mate? Lair, second gas, third gas. Evo Chamber, Roach Warren, having a good time. Oracle's coming in that right side. Oh, hello. Hello. Oracle's pulling away right now. Uh, apparently, Chrono made this map. Wait, Chrono Zeo? I didn't realize Chrono made this map. That's awesome. Apparently, uh, Chrono. Oh, oh, you guys don't make Chrono made this map. Oh, that's very cool. Man, I'm so bad at keeping track of which map maker makes each map. And people will be like, why do you always remember Maris's maps then? I'll tell you why. It's because I've met her in person. That's it. I just, I, I've only met, I, I used to remember Avex's maps as well because I'd met him in person. I don't know. It's just once I have a face to put to a name, I remember it so much better. Oracle's pulling back. We got the Zealots coming forward. Then again, actually, I feel like I have met Chrono at an event. Maybe we just haven't had as good of a chance to chat. Anyway, charge lot timing coming out for Max Packs, guys. It's six minutes. Plus one's not quite timing out with it. Normally, you do want to have plus one ready with this so you can two-shot those Zerglings. But I think Dark's ready. He's got seven Roaches, six Queens, and a couple of Zerglings. And especially, I mean, he doesn't have many Transfusers, but with some Cocoon morphing to keep those Ravages alive... It's a good start. Max Max needs to get out. When you play Zealot Pressure Styles, learning when to commit and when to run away is one of the big things. When they first took away Zealot damage but buffed their movement speed, I remember I was actually playing Void Ray Zealot every game in PvZ, and it was really fun because the Zergs just weren't used to the Zealots being able to run in, start a fight, and then go, nah, this fight's not that good, and just run away, regenerate their shields, come in from another angle. And it was this mixture of Void Rays and Zealots just running around the map picking things off, being a nuisance, and then you'd kind of explode into triple robo. Now, Dark is going for a massive attack. He's got lots of roaches. He's also going for banelings, but remember, these are not upgraded banelings. He doesn't need them because the zealots are going to come to them. You need baneling speed to close with stalkers and the like, but against zealots, he's like, dude, I don't even need it. Oh my god, the stasis trap could ruin him though. Dark? Okay, splits a ravager off. Maybe not the best way to do it, but it's fine. It's way better than getting your army frozen, that's for sure. Oracles focusing on ravages. Probes are in the open. Zealot Immortal trying to hang on. Good spread on the Zealots to at least mitigate some of that damage. Oracle on the left doing what it can. Eight probes have already gone down. 
This is why Blink is the standard, guys. Zealot run by does come in, though. Zealot's doing really well, killing all the queens. Every queen just died. Every single queen died. Dark is kind of all in with this. I mean, he's doing a lot of damage, and it looks like it'll be enough. The High Templar defending Daddy Immortal there. Oh, it does take out that as well. And he should be able to morph those Archons behind the wall in. Third base will go down. There is a fourth in the top. That looks like it'll fall as well. These guys will survive. This should be enough, though, for Dark. Seven drones, Aspire, and I think it should be an easy call to just rebuild your queens at home behind this as Dark, get your economy back up. Really good surprise attack. So as I was saying, this is why Blink is standard, because Blink is so good defensively, because you can shoot and pull back and use your shield batteries and your wall-offs and your defenses. Whereas with Zealots, they're melee units. And, and as you can imagine, guys, there's a reason they would use bows and arrows on top of castle walls. It's because using a sword on top of the wall, it's good when the enemy comes over the wall, not that useful when they're climbing the ladders. Not that useful when they're marching up to the gates and hitting it with a battering ram. And that's... I always like using kind of just, just like some sort of old school military scenario to paint the picture because it really does pretty much all apply to StarCraft. And if you're going for a big hand-to-hand -hand army, you need to find a way to close on your enemy's ranged units and get surface area on them. You need to get flanks on them where possible. If you can get surrounds on them, that's even better. If you can hold them in place so they can't retreat, that's basically the game winner. But he was outnumbered after his first zealot attack, didn't do it much damage, and he took a fourth base a bit too early without having enough stuff. Maybe having a fourth or fifth oracle, a bit more energy, could have defended that attack. Drone does get taken out, trying to take a fifth base. Dark's nearby though. Oh man. Oh, the Banelings get some juicies. Good hits there for Dark. Takes out those Zealots. Archon attack comes in the right side, but there's no way this does much. There's just not enough. The Roach Queen tanking the Archon shots, chucking up that acid in the air like they just don't care. And Dark is going to force a game three out of Max Packs. He didn't want to be playing this. Mutas, look at the way Dark shift clicks the Mutas to the left and onto the Prism. Somehow the Roaches are falling. Plus two Archons are very good units, guys. They are very good units. Oh my gosh. He's killing so much. I mean, it's still not going to win, but it did way more than I expected there. I looked at the supply. I saw a lot of roaches with roach speed and queens, which is what you need against Zealot Archon. And I was like, there's no way. I want to see Max Pack stutter step this Archon now to kill the Mutalisk. Kills the Zergling. Kill the Mutal. Oh, it's, it's, it's got a, a very slow turn rate, the Archon. So it's not a very good move and shoot unit. And the Mutalisk does manage to assist with that kill and get out scot-free. Observer coming home. Couple of Archons, couple of Zealots. 52 workers for Max Pax on 3 base, 59 for Dark. Max Pax is somehow keeping this vaguely competitive despite being down 50 supply. That's actually crazy. Uh, three more muters are being built, so he wants to get a pack of muters, fly them into the main base, and uh, no doubt start to bounce around between these. Knowing that Max Pax can't afford to go Phoenix blind here, and also doesn't have enough scouting to know about the mutalisks that are coming. That being said, Zealots might find them. Ah, the Overlord sees the Zealots, so the Zealots change direction, but wait, they see it. They see it. They see a Mutalisk. Does he realize Max Pax? What can he even do, though? What can he do? Like, recall the Archons there? I, I guess that's all he can do, but I don't think he saw it. Ah, that is rough, mate. That is very, very rough. Zealot Archon coming in. Mutus slaying the worker line. The Archon's going to hit that right side. They could take out that hatchery. He doesn't want to spawn the Broodlings from that killed hatchery just yet. Zealots in the south running into the roaches. They are holding their own, those roaches. Queens and Ravages are starting to fall in the mid-ground. Meanwhile, on the other side, though, the Mutalisks are ruining Max Max economy. Lone Stalkers warping in will not be enough to hang on. Max Max economy is shredded. It's four Archons, a Warp Prism, and a Dream. Max Max is pretty good at micro, but I don't know about this one. How are those all four Archons still alive? How? Okay, what in the hell, Max Max? Finally, an Archon and a second one do go down. Prism saves the rest, and the Mutas go into the main base for the last vestiges of Max's economy. Max Max has to tap out Dark, tying up the series on side Delta. Very nice. All right, guys, going to game three. Dark went 16 hatch this time. Max Max actually went for a much earlier block, sending one of his first workers across to block the Expo, and Dark has decided to do a really bad hatchery block in response to it. But Max Max is, it stays there for so long. This is such a bad build. Dark always comes out even off this build, despite his hatchery being 20 seconds late. That's a 20 second late hatchery, guys. 
And now he's gonna go hatch block this. You see he's waiting for a bit more minerals. And now he comes in, so he'll have 300 right when he gets there. Just as Max Max Probe is coming down. And he goes, na 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 na. Now, most players pull probes against this. Max Max is not. He's gonna two gate. Oh, I love this response. This is one of my favorite ways to do it. So he's gonna build a Zealot or two to attack that. He doesn't need to build a pylon. Oh, now he pulls probes. So he's still gonna pull some probes. Okay, but, but it's not a big probe pull. It's just enough to get it damaged. Because remember, once the hatchery finishes building, it spreads creep really fast. You don't want it to, even if it finishes, you don't want it to be like finished and fully spread creep. You also, it gets an armor when it's finished building, which means it's harder to kill. So getting the damage in now rather than later is the play. Now, Max Bex is still denying mining in the main with his probe, being an absolute legend. We're explaining... Okay, this, this is going to get interesting because it's double adept, but no second gas. So we, I, I know some people will also go second gas in Stargate. Max Max is trying to go, I want to double adept pressure, but I also want to expand. Now, Dark's going to try and deny with the drone. This is a Captain D-head drone for sure. Uh, his entire job to pit, pit, you know, really annoy his opponent. Max Max, did he, did he think he built a second gas? Maybe. Oh, he hasn't built a Nexus yet. He's building a third adept. Okay, he's going across with a Zealot and two Adepts. He can deny the third base if he goes for it. But right now, there's no Queens. Links, I mean, you can see how late the hatchery was. But then also the spawning pool and the gas behind it, because he's gone three hatchery before spawning pool. That's why these two Adepts are going to keep Dark locked on a very low work account. Nexus goes down after second gas. Very late Nexus. So there's a lot of room for Dark to defend this, start droning up, and still find himself ahead. Adept goes home. Still got a probe chasing the drone just to make sure it's not annoying. Not doing any damage. Okay, the, Zer the Zealot will get surrounded. But he's going to lose at least a few units with that. And the Adepts will shade into the main. Great, great, great choice. Already taking out a drone. Make it two. He's going to take out a few of these Zerglings as well. Oh, he did miss time his shots there. But four kills is friggin' legendary, man. If he can get out, that would be massive. But I think he's going to get trapped. Good micro by Dark. Turning the corner. He's out. He's out. He's out. Or she, I should say. Adepts are uh, of the Lady Persuasion, I believe. Lady Protoss? I don't even know. Do Protoss have gender? I think they do. Anyways, they're going to come back. Second Adept on the way. Stargate coming out. Uh, Nexus is there. I mean, if plants have gender, then Protoss do. Because Pro Protoss also photosynthesize, right? What do you call that sex? I don't know. Whatever the term is. Not a discussion. I want to say, I want to. There's gonna be like three guys in the YouTube comments now who are like, yeah, joke about that stuff. It's all good. I, I'm gonna move on. Uh, oracles are on the way. First oracles almost finished. Uh, <laughs> really, really inviting some fucking great discussion in the chat, guys. I'm like, do Protoss. I mean, they don't have any orifices and they do photosynthesize, but that's about as far as my Protoss lore goes. I'm reading a lot of Warhammer books right now. I say reading, listening to, let's be honest. I don't read anymore. I'm an idiot. Um, audio books are great, but I've been listening to a lot of the Warhammer books. And once I'm done with the, the Horus Heresy, I might actually get some of the Starcraft books just to, to see. So if you guys know any really good Starcraft books, maybe I'll learn more about the lore while also actually uh, enjoying some good, some good stories. So let me know your recommendations for the best Starcraft novel. Uh, I know I've asked this before, but I didn't write it down, so. Sorry to ask a second time. Nice Oracle Adept pressure. Queen goes down. Good cancel in the shade, actually. That was a really nice cancel. I thought that was going to finish. He waited to the very last mic microsecond. The Lings come in, but once you get both Oracles turning their lasers on, you have to get out of there. And Dark took some pretty big damage. Now, to be fair, the third base is a little delayed. Third and fourth gas is just going... I mean, I say a little delayed. Very delayed. Third and fourth gas is just going down. Dark has four Queens. He's about to go to six. He's trying to build Spores. Oracles grab a few drones. Oh, that's some nice damage. Three three drones. Pretty important right now. Max Max has the economic lead, but his Twilight and Forge have just gone down. Plus one melee and a Baneling Nest goes down. I always feel like Roach Warren first is the better option here. Oh, damn. Nerve Spin. Thank you for the support. Ling's going for a surround in the Adepts. Oh, Oracle's getting some good damage. Dude, I, so many adepts still survive. I think he should cancel the shade, but he's decided, hey, these are early game units. Let's use them now for economic damage. And you know what? Can't argue with that. Four more drones going down. Could have got a fifth if he microed that ever so slightly better. 
Only two oracles have enough energy to go in and do damage. So good choice to pull back right here. Now notice there are Zerglings being built. If we see any more Zerglings, you know what Dark's doing. It's the Silly Ling Bane attack. Yeah, even with a fourth base, that's not a sign of macro. That's a macro hatch, guys. Yeah, more Zerglings are building. So he's going to do the Ling Bane bust. Um, this attack is famous for basically looking like it should never work. I'll never forget the first time I saw him do this for stats. And I was like, well, there's no way this is going to work. This is way too late in the game for a random Bane bust. But he hits at such an awkward timing. A lot of the time, Protoss is not ready for it. And look at that. He baited out the Oracle energy. That's the most important thing. If Max Pax uses even more energy diving in, that's also really bad for Max Pax. Max Pax needs the oracles at home. He sees the drone count. Max Pax should know he's being all in. No drones have been getting built. How many gateways has he got? He's got six gates. The stalkers are in the open. Oh, huge blunder for Max. He turns on the oracle energy. That was a big blunder, mate. A big blunder. I don't think he paid attention. I don't think he noticed the saturation. Here it is. That silly attack we were talking about. Dark is so behind in income. He needs to not just kill the probes. He needs to kill the base. Killing, killing the probes is not enough here. Two Adepts warping in. The Banelings actually get a decent hit on those Zealots actually warping in. Probably a better choice than Adepts. Pylon does go down. Blink is nowhere near done, which is a big problem. His wall is wide open, and he doesn't have any way to build anything on this third base, and he's out of Oracle energy. He just built a fourth Oracle. He needs to keep building Oracles. If he keeps building Oracles, he can survive. If he doesn't, I don't think he's going to have enough warpings to defend. Oracle... No, the new Oracle is helping out so much, but look at these Stalkers. They're taking so much damage. Two oracles turned on their lasers. I think that was a mistake. I think he should have only turned on one just then. That being said, the unit count is gathering. I think Max Pax has held on for the scariest part. Dark is still committing, which is insane. The fact that he didn't start droning till now is actually crazy. That is Dark, though. The man is a crazy player. Plus one attacks just finished for the Stalkers. Plus one armor has already started. That's right. It's a double forge play for Max Pax. Six gates, double forge, three bases. Equal workers with the Zerg. Dark does have an army advantage. He did a lot of damage. He killed 22 probes. He killed six stalkers. He's in an okay spot. Oh, turning on every oracle at once. Not my favorite move there. But Dark actually sits over it. Takes more damage than I thought he would. With Blink now finished, the stalkers can get out there and push the zerglings away easier. Dark still massing lings on two gas. What? Guys, Dark is playing five base, mineral only, mass Zergling. Okay, he's going to take a third gas at the nine minute mark. I have to take a big deep breath to calm down. Because you guys, you, you, if you don't know mineral, normally you take gas on most of your bases. You take most of it. Occasionally you skip a couple here. But he's he's got almost no gas. He's basically just saying, I'm just going to make a thousand Zerglings. And this can work if your opponent doesn't build, say, Archons or Storm, or Colossus. It can work really well. But if they do, you really need the Hive. And the Infestation Pit only just started, and he's making so many Zerglings, it's actually kind of silly. Now, don't get me wrong, if those Oracles run out of juice, and the Lings surround everything, they can do pretty well. And he's hiding the rest of his Lings at home, I believe, right? Yeah. He's got a big pack on the front. He's going back to droning now. I just feel like he's... If he was already up at 72 drones this whole time, I, I, I'd kind of... I'd like this style a bit more. I also think just 20, 30 seconds off this hive timing would, would make the world of difference. Infestation pit finishes and the hive starts. You can tell he knows how urgent it is that he gets ultras and vipers up. Could go infestors as well. I, I think I, I think both spellcasters are actually amazing with this style. If you can fungal your opponent's units in place and blinding cloud them, they become very weak. But plus two armor has already started. Plus two attacks already almost finished. Max Max sees no gas on the third. He does see gas on this front base, which which maybe hides the fact of what he's doing, but look at how many Zerglings he's seen. Max Max should realize, oh, this is a mass ling into ultra play. Okay. And against this, what do you do? You basically prepare for them to try and base trade you and counterattack you all game long. Wow, still getting drone kills. Seven work is very nice. So you build uh, like a full wall off here. You completely wall off this base. You try to wall off this. You just wall everything off and you leave units everywhere. You, because otherwise, they're going to just force you to constantly run probes away, warp in units to respond. Whereas if you just leave like two Archons and a battery and two cannons out here, any Ling Bane coming from that side is going to have a tough time. You know, if you wall off this side or you, you know, something like that, or you get some gateways in front of here, the Banelings always have to come through the center where your army is. All these things make it really hard for Zerg. Now, there are two Colossus out. They're going to have extended Thermal Ants. They've got two one upgrades, which is a pretty good point in the game. And those Colossus do crazy damage versus light units. You add stasis traps to this, 
Oh man, without ultras out, there's no real answer to stasis traps. There's no spellcasters in the mix either. Ling's coming from every side. The stasis traps are big though. Stasis traps are very, very big. The Colossus Micro is so slick. Max Pax completely evades the Zergling surround with a combination of Blink, Stutter Step on the Colossus, and Stasis Traps. He has already uh, almost 100 kills. He's at 90 kills across the two Colossus combined. 42 on one, 48 on the other. The Oracle's here, 24 kills, 12 kills, 11 kills. I mean, his unit is veteran as all hell. <laughs> when Dark, that, look at the unit's loss. I, Dark's just like, I lost my entire army and I killed nine Stalkers. I'm actually dead. Dark just taps out right there and then because he knows he's done for. Very well played by Max Pax.